my buddy. Everyone, this is Midnight. He's my baby. Say hi, buddy. He's so amused. He hates being held. <laughs> It's okay, boy. I love you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if this is the first time you are stumbling upon my channel, hi, my name is Noelle. Welcome. Um, today's video is going to be a, a blogger guide to New York City. So I decided I wanted to start a new series here on my channel, and it's going to be the blogger's guide to and then a city that I've been. I love traveling. It is one of my favorite things to do. I love experiencing a new place, a new culture, um, and it's just one of the many things that I love to do. And I've been fortunate enough to travel to a ton of different places, so I decided I wanted to break it down and have one full guide here on my channel, and I'll make a playlist on it of so you guys can reference it if you guys are ever visiting one of the places that I make a blogger's guide to. So yeah, the first blogger's guide is going to be to New York City. I just recently came back from New York City. I've been there a couple times. I live right near New York City, so I have basically been there so many times. I have guess you could say I've grown up in New York City. I am originally from New Jersey and it was always a quick car ride or a train ride to the city. So I have been there multiple times every season. So I'm going to break it down and tell you guys my favorite stuff about New York City. So in these blogger guides, I'm going to basically tell you guys where I've stayed and what I love about it and what I recommend um, in terms of hotels or Airbnbs if I've stayed there. What restaurants I've loved and what type of foods that I like to get in those certain cities that I visited and things to do. Um, most of the time when I visit a new city, I like to do the atypical touristy things just because that is where um, I like to take most of my pictures, but I also do love to go off the beaten path in a lot of different places that I go to as well. But yeah, I like to do a lot of the, I don't know, I guess you could say touristy things, but I also love to do the um, off the beaten path and not the stereotypical touristy things in a lot of places because that's where you really truly experience the place that you are visiting and the culture and just the way of life in that certain place that you're visiting. So without further ado, let's get into this blogger's guide of New York City. Also, before I get into this guide, if there is any cities that you guys really want to know about, um, leave them down below, comment down below what city you guys are maybe visiting to in the next year or you would like to see on this new series that I'm doing. I would love to, um, hopefully I've been there and if I have been there, then I will do one for you. So I did make a list of things on my phone. So if you see me looking down, that is why I have it on my phone. But I'm first gonna start off with hotels. So I, majority of the time when I have visited New York City, when I visit, it's mostly for a day trip. I've gone there a ton of times. It's a quick about three hour drive from my hometown. So I always would usually drive. I've only stayed over in New York City a couple of times, but when I have, I've stayed in one of my favorite, one of my favorite hotels and it's relatively exp inexpensive. So I wouldn't say it's like really, really expensive compared to some of the hotels in New York City. And I wouldn't say that it's affordable. It's kind of in the middle, but it is beautiful and it is worth it because it is right in my favorite neighborhood. It is located in Soho, New York. Um, I love going there and is become one of my favorite places to go in New York City. It is called, the hotel is called Nomo Soho. You guys have probably heard about it because it is a huge blogger hotel, if that makes sense. They have great views there and it's just a beautiful location. It's right in Soho. So I like to stay in a hotel in the neighborhood that I'll most likely be in just because I can walk to the destinations rather than having to jump on the subway or taking an Uber, which can get very expensive in the city. They do jack up the prices and there's a ton of taxes in New York City in terms of Uber. So I like to walk to most of my places so Soho is the place that I love to hang out the most so I will find a hotel in that neighborhood if you're traveling there and you have a specific place that you need to be I would look for that so you can at least walk to where you're going instead of having to pay for transportation but yeah Nomo Soho is beautiful um, it's kind of offers everything that you need it to beautiful views um, not much to say about it and there is a famous like arch way in the beginning of the hotel that you will most likely see someone taking a picture there if you've been to New York. It's um, one of those places that a lot of people love taking pictures in because it is beautiful. The second hotel that I've stayed in, it is a little bit more expensive. This is kind of if you are feeling bougie and you want to treat yourself if you're going to New York City um, or if you don't have a budget. The Ludlow Hotel in, I don't know what neighborhood it is. So the Ludlow Hotel is located in Lower East Side and it's near NoHo if that's another area that you need to know of. But it is a quick uh, walk to Soho. It's about a 15 minute walk to Soho. So I did walk there. Um, so it's still relatively in that area that I really wanted to stay in, but I wanted to experience a different hotel and I absolutely loved the Ludlow. It is absolutely gorgeous inside. The, oh my God, the aesthetic of the entire hotel is beautiful. The restaurant downstairs is really good. Uh, it's just decorated beautifully. It just feels like you're kind of in an old time hotel and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. The room was gorgeous and 
not much to say about it. The bathrooms were absolutely beautiful. They had just, oh, it just was a really great hotel. So yeah, if you guys don't have a budget, I would definitely recommend the Ludlow. It is absolutely beautiful. And there's a ton of hotels that you can stay in New York City, but this is just the two that I've stayed in. And then the last hotel that I recommend, it was actually a mother-daughter trip years ago. I forget how long ago it was. Maybe it was like three or four years ago. There's significance to this hotel uh, and it was absolutely beautiful. It was right in the city and you definitely got the feel of like being a New Yorker for a hot second if you stay in this hotel. It is the Waldorf Astoria. I'm not sure exactly where it's located. Okay, so it's right on Park Ave and it's right near Rockefeller Center. So you are literally right in that Vicinity, so if you are doing the extremely touristy things, that is a really great hotel to stay in. I'm not sure of the price because again, I was younger and obviously my, my parents paid for it when I went. I think I was literally back in high school. But it was an absolutely beautiful hotel and me and my mom actually stayed there. We had a girls weekend in New York City because one of our favorite movies that we love to watch together is called Serendipity. And that was, there's a scene in the movie that they do there in that hotel. So we kind of just wanted to have like a fangirl moment and stay there and also recreate that whole scene. And it actually ended up being, if you guys are familiar with the movie we actually ended up picking the same floor uh, it's a great movie you guys should definitely see it and it was just a great memory that me and my mom shared together but it was definitely a beautiful hotel and maybe one day me and her will stay there again so now moving on to food New York is definitely filled with a ton of different food Oh my gosh, there's so many freaking restaurants you can eat in New York City. I have eaten in a ton of them, but I've written down my favorites to narrow them down, and these are it. Okay, so in relation to neighborhoods, I will mention the ones that are in Soho area. Um, there's quite a few restaurants that I love in Soho. So the first one is Butcher's Daughter. I have eaten the last few times that I've been there and I absolutely love it. It is so, so good. It is very, very tiny. So all these restaurants are extremely tiny. So if it's busy on like a weekend or around the holidays, it might be a little bit of a wait because Butcher's Daughter is basically outside seating and a little bit inside, but they have the best food. Um, I'm pretty sure it's vegan. I think I don't want to like quote myself on that, but uh, I got a black bean burger and it was so good. Their juices are absolutely amazing. I got the passion fruit juice. I think that's what it is. Passion something. So good. Um, definitely one of those places. Very Instagrammable. Cute little cafe. If you guys are looking to get a cute cafe picture, that's a great place. And if you guys are looking for the well-known pink cafe that everyone takes a picture in. It is called Nolita Petrito, I think, or something like that. I don't know, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but it is right around the corner from that. So if you guys eat a butcher's daughter, you guys can get a cute little picture in front of the pink wall cafe. It's right there, you cannot miss it. You'll turn the corner and you'll see it. So yeah, butcher's daughter is one of my favorite places to eat. Um, another great place for brunch is called Two Hands. Uh, if you guys are staying in the Nomo Soho, all of these are in a relative walking area about five to ten minute walk nothing bad at all um the two hands is right down the street from nomo soho so i went there for brunch when i was waiting to check in for my hotel great i got the avocado toast and it's just one of those great places for brunch and again very aesthetic so if you guys want to take a picture there it's beautiful another great place that i ate at last time i was there and i actually like stumbled upon it i saved it to my instagram and i just happened to walk upon it in new york while i was walking around i was like okay i have to eat here i'm starving i'm gonna get lunch anyway so it is called taco dumbo it is so good it, it is an, another vegan restaurant i got the spiced cauliflower tacos with i think like an apple margarita it was so good so cute inside it definitely is instagrammable it's there's like a whole wall filled with palm leaves and everything is pink pink neon signs and then they have a ton of like palm uh plants and bird of paradise and stuff all in there it's such a cute cute cafe kind of reminds me of a cafe in la that you would find it's definitely very la um it definitely stands out in new york city because everything is kind of like brownstone browns and then you have this like bright pink neon sign that is saying taco dumbo it is so good you guys definitely have to go there um and it's right near all the shopping and it's right next to brandy melville if you guys are looking for that as well i know a ton of people love brandy it's right across the street from brandy the next one is by chloe which is right near taco dumbo as well by chloe is another great place um i actually ordered Uber Eats to my hotel at the Ludlow um, because I really wasn't having a good day that day. I had a lot of anxiety anyway. Um, but I was really looking forward uh, to just eating in. So I ordered Uber Eats of by Chloe and it was so good. I got the vegan burger and I got the fries with beet ketchup and it was so good. I hate beets personally, but the beet ketchup was so good. It's another great place that everyone talks about. Their French fries are really good as well. Um, so if you guys are in the mood for more of like a fast foodie type um, meal then by Chloe is really good because it is still vegan the next restaurant that I'm gonna name is actually probably by far my favorite restaurant in New York City that I've eaten there it was 
amazing. I can't even describe. It was one of the best meals I've had in a really long time. I went there when I went into the city with my family. We saw a Broadway show and then we ended up going to a restaurant called Catch New York City. There is one in LA as well. Um, that's where I originally heard about it, but I never knew there was one in New York City. Catch is located in the meatpacking district and it is by far one of the best meals that I've ever had. If you guys have seen uh, bloggers on their Instagram stories um, sticking like a bottle into a donut and squeezing it and having it as like a dessert that's where you get it from or like the hit me cakes that like have um, they like implode and there's like chocolate in it they have that as a dessert there as well it's just really 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 good food um, beautiful inside it's upstairs in like an old brown um, brick what am I trying to say it is in a building that has really beautiful brick walls um, Tons of natural light. Again, a great place to take some pictures with your friends. Um, and the meal is absolutely amazing. One of the best meals I've ever had in New York City. So definitely, definitely have to try it. Catch if you guys are in the meatpacking um, district when you're in New York City. A couple more uh, for ice cream. I love, love, love ice cream. And I one of my favorite places that my friend Maddie actually showed me in one of my New York City vlogs. I will have that linked up below if you guys want to watch it. It was a very spontaneous New York City trip. But she introduced me to a ice cream place. I have no idea how to pronounce this and I'm going to butcher it, but Van Van Lumen, I think, but it is so good. They have regular ice cream, but they also make their ice cream with oat milk. So it is vegan ice cream, which is awesome because I can't have dairy and it was so good. My favorite flavor is the honeycomb. Uh, they sell them in pints as well. So if you guys want to take one to go, that's what I did and I ate at my hotel and it was just magical. Really great place to get ice cream. Another great place that me and my friend Brie actually went to years ago. I think it's near Central Park area and it's called Holy Cream. It's so good. I don't know if they have vegan options because I ate there years ago, but they have ice cream and um, a donuts on top to make like an ice cream sandwich. It is so good. I actually found that from like one of like the New York City Eats Instagrams and they are posted all the time. It was so good. It was so, so good. Those are some good places to go eat. And then Black Tap is another place that's really good. They have a ton located all over the place, but my favorite one is near Central Park. It's just bigger. The one in Soho is extremely tiny and me and Cash ate there when I was there for New York Fashion Week a couple years ago and it was just, it was during February's Fashion Week. So it was just it's so small to even walk in there with our coats and everything in our bags. So I recommend going to the one um, near Central Park, but they have really great milkshakes. They're known for their like extremely extravagant, Milkshakes, Cash got a Reese's peanut butter one. I think I got the cotton candy one the last time I went, but they also have really good burgers as well. Uh, so I definitely recommend going there for food. And then, so I have two more restaurants. I know I have a ton of restaurants. It's just depending on where you are in the city. I love New York City food. Another great one that me and my mom love is Serendipity 3. Again, it is based off of the movie that we love, Serendipity, and they actually ate in this restaurant in the movie. So we definitely had to go and have another fangirl moment but they're known they are famous for their frozen hot chocolates and it is so good they're massive and you can share it with somebody it's a great date um place to go to it definitely gets busy on the weekends because they are famous for their frozen hot chocolate but it's just so good so yeah try and go there during lunchtime it's not as packed but again another great place and then lastly this one's kind of only for if you're around Christmas time. So I know a lot of people travel to New York City. Christmas time is coming up. The holidays are coming up and it's one of the busiest seasons for New York City. And I know I would always go into the city with my boyfriend because that was around our anniversary. So we always loved going to New York City for the holidays when the tree was lit. And one of the greatest places that I've been to, um, me and my mom actually went there a couple years ago, is called Rolf's Bar and Restaurant. You guys have to go here if you're here during the holidays. It is decorated so beautifully. They have ornaments hanging all over the ceilings it is decorated head to toe with um with christmas decorations and ornaments and it's just absolutely beautiful in there it is a german restaurant so uh if you guys don't like that food it is definitely worth to go see maybe grab a drink there at the bar it is absolutely beautiful there is no reservation so you do have to stand in line and that was the only thing that sucked about it because it was so cold in new york city and i remember me and my mom freezing outside uh but it is so worth so worth to see the food was okay it wasn't the best german food i've had because again cash and his family is like german and they love their german food and it's one of cash's favorite so i have had a couple different restaurants it wasn't the best but it was absolutely beautiful um we got some mulled wine and it just was really nice to warm up and just celebrate the holidays in this beautiful restaurant okay now that we're done with food i swear i'm done <laughs> I'm like a New York foodie. So some things to do in the city. Again, I love doing the touristy things. Um, I actually haven't done most touristy things in New York City, which is funny because I've been there so many times. Um, Times Square is okay. If you haven't seen it, 
uh, at all. Definitely go there and walk by, but it's not the most amazing thing. I've seen it so many times. I try and steer clear of Times Square just because if you actually are a New Yorker, I guess you could say, you don't go to Times Square because it's just not the place to go. Uh, it's kind of like Nashville. You don't go to Broadway if you're in Nashville, stuff like that. So it is beautiful if you've never seen it, but I don't say it's a necessarily a need to do, but definitely go if you've never seen it. Um, the Met is a great place to go uh, in terms of if it's raining in the city, you guys can take a look at some beautiful artwork. The Met Gala is held there and I just swoon over everybody's crazy outfits every year, but it is a beautiful museum if you guys want to take a look there. It's also one of the filming places for Gossip Girl if you guys are into that. I love Gossip Girl uh, and you could take a picture on the Met steps and have your Blair Waldorf moment. Another great place that I definitely think is worth year round. I'm still waiting to go in the fall. I have it and I really want to go because it's, I heard it's absolutely beautiful. It's Central Park. So cliche, but Central Park is one of the best places you should definitely go when you're in your, when you are in New York City. Uh, I just think it's worth it. And there's so many things to do in New York City. It was, has a special place in my heart because me and Cash went there on our first date and we walked around and it just has really great memories for us. But uh, one of the, there's a couple things that you can do in Central Park that's really cool instead of just walking around. Um, definitely don't ride the horses, I, I would say. First of all, they rip you off. Second, um, I'm not too much an advocate for those horse and carriage rides. Those horses look absolutely miserable and they just look tortured. So please don't support them. Don't give them your money. They will rip you off. It's about like $80 for like a 20 minute ride, which is not really worth it. You can definitely just walk and get your exercise and still see the beautiful scenery without supporting animal cruelty basically. So please don't do that. Uh, but one of the, what, there's three things that I love to do in Central Park is the row house. You guys should definitely go there. I think there is a restaurant there. I'm not entirely sure. I've never eaten there, but I think there is. But what's cool about the row, ho row house is if it's fall, spring, or summer, I don't know if they do that in the winter, probably not. But they, you can rent rowboats and go on the lake lake river lake um in the middle of central park and go on a cute little date great scenery great photo op you guys can take pictures there it's absolutely beautiful and just a really great date idea another thing is and it's actually relatively inexpensive it's not bad the next thing is ice skating everyone likes to go ice skating especially around the holidays uh, in Rockefeller Center and I personally think it's overrated. I think you have a way better view in Central Park and it's never it's not as crowded. I definitely bring cash. I don't know if they accept cards so I would bring cash. I'm almost positive they only accept cash. Um, but yeah, it's definitely be more beautiful and I think the scenery is better, is, is better. So go ice skate in Central Park. And then the last thing is actually really cool and I really want to get cash. I wish I knew about this when we went there when we were in school because it was a quick train ride and we would go there all the time. I wish I knew about this back in the day, but eventually me and Cash will get back to the city and I will definitely make him go and do this with me. But there's a guy right on Central Park, like the area where all of the vendors are. There's one big street that you can walk down and there's one guy that's there that takes vintage photos of you. So you and your best friends, your family or your boyfriend or your partner, you guys can take pictures with him and he will develop them for you and give you a Polaroid. I just think it's a different thing to do instead of doing the touristy things and you can still have a picture taken and have that as a memory. Um, it's a great souvenir instead of buying like a keychain or something like lame from New York City. You guys have a Polaroid that you can remember and I just, I'm a sucker for something old fashioned. So it's right, he's, I'm not sure of his name but you can find him right on the street, the big street where all of the art pieces are, where the people are playing music. He's on that, he's on that street somewhere. Lastly, I just thought of this. I've never done it, but it's something that I've wanted to do for such a long time. There is a company that I follow on Instagram. If I can find them, if I remember what their name is, I will link it on the screen right here so you guys can follow them or link it in the description so you guys can go check them out. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but it's one of the things, one of my bucket list things that I've wanted to do. They're a company that does doorless helicopter tours of New York City. So you can see Manhattan, you can see um, Central Park and take a tour. It's something way different to do in New York City rather than walking around going to see Times Square and doing all of that. You guys can go up in a doorless helicopter, hang your feet out and see New York City from above. And I just, it's one of the things that I want to do for so long. And I feel like that would be such a great um, anniversary thing to do, whether you're visiting there or something to do with your family. If you're adventurous, it's one of the things that I want to do for so long. So you guys should definitely check that out as well. Lastly, on the things to do in New York City is one of my Favorite things I've done in New York City is walk the Brooklyn Bridge. It is in Brooklyn, obviously, Brooklyn Bridge, uh, but you can enter it from each side, but I like entering it from the Brooklyn side because it is the most easiest. 
Uh, if you are staying in the Nomo Soho, you can see, because from the view of my hotel room, I could see the Williamsburg and the Brooklyn Bridge from my hotel room. It was absolutely beautiful. So it is relatively close there and it's very easy to get to. So if you enter from the Brooklyn side, there is a parking garage right around the corner from there that we parked in before and there is an entrance that you just enter and go straight up and it's the easiest way to get there because I think the view from the Brooklyn side is way better than the Manhattan side. If you enter from the Brooklyn side, it's way better. Um, that's the iconic bridge picture that you see everyone getting. My recommendation is to, if you don't care about taking pictures, then you can honestly go during whatever time. But if you were trying to get a photo, get there early in the morning. Sunrise is beautiful. You'll still have probably have people there, but it won't be as packed. I remember when my mother and I went, we probably got there around like one o'clock and it was so packed. I still managed to get a photo, but it was extremely difficult. And I feel like sunset would be really packed too since sunrise, most people don't wake up early in the morning. Uh, I feel like sunset would still be packed, but it is also another great time to go. So yeah, sunrise and sunset is the perfect time to go to the Brooklyn Bridge. It is definitely a must. So beautiful there. And I love Brooklyn. That's another place that I love, love, love to go to. It's a great place to go. They have great food, so much vintage shopping and thrifting. Uh, you can spend the whole day in Brooklyn, honestly, in my opinion, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And if you walk down the steps after you're down the Brooklyn Bridge, you can keep walking straight and you'll eventually hit Dumbo, where again, Dumbo is another great place. That's where Dan lived. Um, you can see his apartment on the corner if you want to see that iconic Brooklyn, uh, well actually it's the Williams, Williamsburg Bridge picture um, and Dumbo, Dumbo is right there. So it is all in the vicinity of each other, but Brooklyn Bridge is definitely a must go see while you're in New York City because it is a quick little drive um, across if you're staying in Soho. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I've covered. Um, other than that, uh, if you guys are in New York City as well, if you guys can definitely go see a Broadway show. I feel like that's kind of self-explanatory but um it is definitely a ritual and a tradition of me and my family to always go see a broadway show at least once a year we try and go to one um as a family and i've seen a ton my top three are wicked adam's family and lion king so those three are my absolute favorite definitely go see them they're all absolutely amazing definitely a must yeah this is the end of my blogger's guide to new york city i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys found it helpful let me know down in the comments your thoughts and comments and anything that i can work on anything i can add to these guides um, if you guys like this idea and again also let me know down below what cities you guys want me to do in terms of what you guys are interested in um, you guys can also comment down below the stuff that you love in New York City because I'm sure they might be different than mine and everyone has a different experience in every different place that they go to so also keep that in mind as well my experience isn't going to be the same as yours but I really hope you guys enjoyed this and love this idea um, expect some other places as well uh, the next ones that I have in mind that I've been writing down are Miami, Tulum, Florence, Italy, and Nashville. So those are the next ones to come, I'm pretty sure. So stay tuned for them as well, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.